You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because- That look good. I got big energy every day. Let's go! And he is dicked. Blind squirrel finds a knife every once in a while. That's right. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Well, come on, Herbert. Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddies, Kev Hug and Duggan. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. Training camp. It's happening. Kyle, the coach, Duggan, too. What is up, Charger brethren? Hey, hey, hey. That's right, folks. Uh, training camp is, has it started yet, or is it like? Technically, when, when people hear out, this, okay. it will be have started. All right, if you guys are listening to this, then the, the Charger fellas have hit the field and they are practicing their butts off. Uh, can't wait to see it, folks. Can't wait to see these guys start working out there. Lots to talk about this episode. And speaking of training camp, uh, there was a bit of uh, a schedule that dropped uh, care of Justin Jones via Instagram on the schedule. Of yeah, we, camp. we got we got tagged on this, man. Like, I oh, had really? no idea how insane this is. Like like 6 a.m. like it they literally plan out every single moment of their day it is yeah. like a big schedule they're eating for four hours a day it's like gotta, crazy yeah it's a, yeah you gotta, you gotta you gotta plan for that yeah but it's like you i i don't know that's like an 18 hour day dude i'm like stressed I, i'm like having flashbacks <laughs> to playing in high school and the two days and being there all day long and being tired the whole day because I, we were working out all the time uh, i feel for these guys yeah, it's crazy, dude. Like the only time that doesn't have like a meeting or something is a quote unquote transition. And there's two of them. And it's basically going from one thing to the next. They have 25 minutes throughout the day. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's it's a full day, folks. If you haven't seen it, Justin Jones had it on his Instagram from 6 a.m. to 1030 p.m. is how long this schedule goes. I, I Do you think this is a daily schedule? I, I would, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's nothing on here that makes it seem like, oh, this is just for day one. It's all their normal meetings and I guess, like, yeah, lifting. I, and there's nothing you know. here specific to day one business. So it whew. says mandatory lunch. Like you fuckers are gonna yeah. eat right <laughs> now. It is mandatory. <laughs> mandatory breakfast. Mandatory lunch. Is there? Yep, and a mandatory dinner. So there's you have no choice. Mandatory snack meal times. appears to be optional at 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you brought your juice box, that's the time to bust it out. But uh, yeah, boy, these guys have got a lot of work ahead of them. I'm not. Uh, I'm not envious of them one bit. Um, and maybe the and especially the rookies. I don't know if the rookies are used to this kind of a a regimen. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there, there is a 9:30 a.m. flex. You guys think that means like it has some opportunity to change, or everyone just has to stand there? I think everyone like, goes stands in front of the mirror and just flexes, just hikes just up, like, flexing yeah. in front of the mirror. Yeah, yeah. See who's got the best, uh, the best muscles. Yeah, um, either yeah, some kind of motivation to 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 lift more, or like okay, we're good. I like where we're at. It's like a check. Or maybe in. maybe this is when they do that weird stretching routine thing we got last week, where they do the. <laughs> <laughs> oh like the, yeah, uh, the side stretches. To don't avoid, the, uh, avoid the injuries. Yes. Yeah. yeah right. Don't want right. to pull a hammy when they're prevention. activating. Yes, that could be mm -hmm. their activation time. The flex activate time. the flex. <laughs> that's right. So we'll we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's right, folks. Uh, training camp is happening. Um, as we saw in uh, previous uh, videos from Chargers at OTAs, uh, Chargers were visited by none other than Drew Brees. Uh, former Charger quarterback, and we all were kind of thinking that, like, oh man, maybe he's maybe he's here to just be the backup of the backup of the backup, maybe. But no, uh, as he's a all, media guy. He's now. a media guy now. So oh, he was, and some of you guys called us out on that. We appreciate the info. Called we us did. out. Called coach. Called me, out. Okay, let's be all right. <laughs> ever ever seen Banner Brothers? <laughs> Watch it. I'm sometime. sorry. We, we did it together. It's our yeah. yeah. Leave, yeah. leave no Doug in behind. Um, <laughs> leave no Doug in behind. <laughs> So you didn't you didn't correct me when I said it. No, no, we did not. No, so, so we're so, in this together. That's right. We are complicit with <laughs> we're the, on yeah. this Titanic together. <laughs> that's right. Um, 
so Drew Brees uh, was out there at OTAs checking out Justin Herbert and uh, had some great things to say about him while he was at OTAs. But then uh, they also quoted him after the fact. And the quote right now is, I don't think I've seen an athlete quite like him. Uh, we played them last year and I was impressed. Then I saw him at minicamp and OTAs and was amazed at how big and strong he is. His forearms <laughs> and hands look like he has been digging fence post holes his entire life. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> he really yeah. likes him some Herbert. I li- uh, he's, I, but it's good to have him on our side because he's oh, going to be a part of the media, like NFL. I, I don't know what program he's on specifically, but he's gonna he's got our boys back. I like to hear it. Yeah, yeah and, pretty, and very specific cool. on the on the description, like <laughs> well, for- even. Even Craig, Craig on Twitter posted a bunch of stuff about how like Josh Allen gets hyped up about how big and strong and freakishly athletic he is. Uh-huh. And then you look at like the size of Justin Herbert, the weight of him, identical, if not more. And then all of his numbers at the combine were better than yeah. Josh Allen's were. There you go. But of course, being on the Chargers, oh, that was a fluke first year. Of You're course. gonna have a slump. Yeah. Well, you got two teams pissed off that they didn't take him. It's like one yeah. of those things. It's like you're going to have that forever now because they blew it. And right. They yeah. didn't. You've got teams right. pissed off that they didn't take Herbert. You've got teams pissed off that their guy didn't win rookie of the year. We're, <laughs> we're making a lot of enemies uh, for having just having Justin Herbert on our team. Uh, but I don't I give love a shit. It. I don't give I a love it. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Get, bring it on, <laughs> folks. I mean, Herbert's going to, Herbert walks the walk, folks. If Herbert didn't walk the walk, then we wouldn't talk the talk. Am I right, everybody? Uh, brother. All right. So then uh, looking at some other news that happened with the Chargers, uh, you know, you might say this to somebody and they might go, yeah, but who cares? Uh, it's kind of a big deal because uh, Mike Williams got himself a haircut and this wasn't just trimming up the dreads. They're they, gone. They gone, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the dreads have left the building. Um, I think this might help increase his uh, speed a little bit. Um, you the know, helmet won't fall off near. I was going to say it's not going to be launching off every time he lands. It pops off. So yeah. this is good for him. This is good for his uh, for his year. I think the helmet's yeah, got to fit much better. <laughs> It's got to be a lot more comfy. I got to imagine. No way around it. Yeah. Dude, those things were so long. Was, and in the video, there's a video of him after he got a circuit, and he's holding them. And it's like these giant. They're big. Whoa. Like, how much extra weight is that pulling on your neck all the time? Like, that's he's, that's a lot going he's on. He's all business, man. He's cleaned up. He's ready to go get that career year and get Contract paid. year, bro. Let's get yep. paid. Let's get faster. That's we're right. not messing around. That's right. Make these helmets fit. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder. It's funny now that you mentioned, like, how heavy they could have been. You know when you know batters they put the donut on the bat and they you know they do right. those practice swings just <laughs> yeah. to kind of lighten up. Yeah. These past years he's had those dreads just to kind of like build up that building muscle. up to this year. I and now they're gone. <laughs> Ooh, he's just gonna he's gonna fly, folks. Just, he's just gonna rock it. <laughs> he's gained a tenth on his uh, forty time. That's it's right. gonna be weird though. Like normally when you're watching a game and you you just look to see who went up and caught the ball or made the play and you see. The big dreadlocks, you know, it's Mike Williams. Oh, for sure. But now, I, 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 he's going to look weird in a helmet for it's a little while. Weird. Getting used to it, it's gonna, it's gonna be weird. Well, I, I think, I think it's the right move. I think, I think it's good for him because, I mean, <laughs> truly, when he had it, he, he didn't, he didn't wear the dreads down. You hardly ever saw them down, and if they did, they were covered with like a bandana or something like that. He always had them up, and man, that just did not look comfortable at all. Yeah, look great, like you know, visually appealing, but. Good for you. <laughs> Save it for retirement. <laughs> That's right. Um, so he got himself a haircut. You wouldn't think it'd be big news, but it is amongst Charger fans. Uh, and other big news that happened amongst Charger fans, mm. it's been finally finalized. Uh, Melvin Ingram is no longer with the team. And blessedly, nobody can be angry at me that he went to the Kansas City Chiefs because he <laughs> went. You dodged that I bullet. I dodged that bullet so, <laughs> so much. Um Pittsburgh Steelers ended up picking up Melvin Ingram uh, for a contract that's $4 million. I think it's just for a year, right? One year, man. I was surprised to hear this amount. Like, one year, $4 million? Like, that's not very much, man. Well, you kind of figured that that's what he was going to get. You know, he held out this long. COVID year. Right. Caps down. You figure it's going to be a one-year deal, but $4 million is not a lot for a vet guy that's done what he's done. Right. With and the, his caliber of player. Right. The problem I have right now is that he looks 
good. Like he he looked a little bigger, little not you know as mobile as he was in previous years. But like the footage I saw of him on the Steelers, like at the practice, what did he do? He he got he's like way thinner. He's like it looks pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Like what's going on? I don't I don't know how I feel about this. Got to get paid, man. These guys they know what to do when they when they. But have why a, a wait to deal? go to the Steelers to get jacked? Like I don't understand. Uh, he's got something to prove. I mean, he, he's that kind of a player. So. He's he's the guy that likes to show off. Um, and, and I mean, more power to him. I, I mean, if he had to go to a team, Pittsburgh Steelers, fine. You know, I don't love it. I don't hate it. We get to face him. And we get, he gets, we get to go we'll up get against to him. him. Yeah. yeah. We'll get to see him again. When, and he's uh, number when they eight. Play. Is that practice jersey accurate? And that's it. He he picked it for Kobe. He that was sure. why he oh, picked that would be sick. nice. So oh. I, you, you know, you can't be mad at him. He's, no, I'm yeah. not mad at him. Like I, I'm not mad at him. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's not a Bronco, a Raider, or a Chief. Yes. Yep. And you know, we'll get to play him this year, and hopefully, our new stud tackle, hopefully, he um, does nothing, locks him down. Yeah, big time. Yeah, it, it's we all wanted Melvin Ingram to come back, and for four million dollars, it certainly seems like we could have afforded to have him come back. But totally. I think that just means that the Chargers... They've decided. Yeah, they made the decision to not bring him back. Not, And I'm sure not because of like character or anything like that. It right. just didn't fit the scheme of what we wanted right. or we have plans to spend that money elsewhere. Well, and, and you're you're moving on to new leadership. He was exactly. a leader of the old regime. You're exactly. like, you're not a long-term guy. Let's make sure we get like everything's kind of new type of a thing. Yeah. And then... Uh, Keenan Allen was on the Players' Tribune, which is hosted by Cam Jordan and Mark Ingram. Uh, Cam Jordan spoke about Justin Herbert, and we've got a clip here. Let's see what he had to say. Yeah, no, I think um, Herbert's ceiling, though, is, is, is really, really high. I, um, I like the comparison. For me, I like body style like Josh Allen. He can run. He got big arm, everything. But I think he got an ability like Pat Mahomes, so, like he can make all those throws. For real, for real. Yeah, that's high praise. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, he surprised me. I smacked Buddy. Like, first of all, y'all came in with like some 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 you know gap type office alignment. Like y'all got I don't even know where you're, pottery barn office alignment. Them boys was just collapsing. Just <laughs> hey, <barn>. chill. Hey, <laughs> but, chill. but hey, hey, I hit Buddy. He low key more solid than I thought he was. Like, no, he that's what I'm savage, saying, bro. Now he really a dog though, and like everything he do though, like golf, I be golfing with him, paintball shit like that. He just got that swagger. Mm. He know he know he gangster. You know what I'm saying like, yeah, that's that's, that's that dude you need. Besides, he, he, got, you know? he got that chip yeah, on the shoulder. And he your yeah, 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 yeah. Fact, yeah, dude, pottery barn. <laughs> what a comparison! <laughs> Yikes! What does that? And he would know he went up against them. So uh, that like, sucks to hear that from opposing defensive linemen. What they thought of our offensive line? I mean, yeah, take sucks. it seriously. Sucks. Like, we we thought it was bad, but to hear like. Their counterpart saying, "Yeah, you guys, your all line suck. You guys are pottery barn crumbling. Suck." I mean, we had, I think it was the thirty first worst offensive line in the league. So you got to yeah. imagine that the other teams knew it. The other defenses knew that we've got a pottery barn offensive line. Apparently, it, I like pottery barn. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think easily breakable. Yeah, I don't know. I think if you, yeah, if you knock something off a shelf, it's gonna break real easily. <laughs> All they have to just, do is push them over, and down goes yeah. Sam Tevy. He's broken. <laughs> Trey but Turner it just goes broke. To sh- it goes to show how what he did last year, what Herbert did last year, was crazy. Like oh, the yeah. the way these other players thought about our offensive line, and you know the the respect's even higher now. You know, I think. He established it for us as fans of the Chargers and established who he is and what he's all about to the other players in the league. Absolutely. And to hear Keenan Allen talk about, you know, how much that he's seeing it as well and making those kind of comparisons to uh, Patrick Mahomes and everything like that, like, that's that's awesome. We want that kind of a quarterback. And and I just saw recently they uh, somebody posted up a graphic on uh, the how – tall some of the QBs are throughout the league. Justin Herbert is the tallest QB yeah. in the league tied with the newest rookie with Trevor the Jaguars, Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. So yeah, he's we everybody kept saying like, yeah, he's super tall. He's like maybe six three, six four. Dude, six six. <laughs> six six. He's humongous. It's he like massive. <laughs> it's like in high school when they give you the program and you tell them your weight, but you yeah, always you, fit I, that a little always bit. Always bumped it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Jacked it up a little bit. But they didn't apparently he's so humble. He said, oh, yeah, I'm like six three, six four. Yeah. Pull out the tape measure, bro. You're six six. <laughs> yeah. 
We've got the records to prove it. You're six, six, my man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good, good to hear Keenan Allen talking about him like that. But you know, if other teams are talking about our offensive line, how it used to be, guess what folks, that was our biggest upgrade this off season was that O line. So get ready for something, not from pottery barn. What's something, what's something more durable than, <laughs> than pottery. Target? Target. No, no, come on. <laughs> Costco, Home Depot, Industrial? we got wood. Yeah. Home yeah. Depot, our Lowe's offensive line is just going to be <laughs> ready our to John go. Deere offensive line. There you go, John Deere. That works. <laughs> so, all right, well, good deal. Uh, as a reminder, folks, don't forget to go to chargerchat.com. Uh, we've got some sweet merch. I think uh, Kevin's got a, a sweet merch shirt on right now. That's right, Charger Chat. There's a lot of sweet shirts over there, some stickers as well, hoodies. We've got shirts for men, women, and children. Go to chargerchat.com, check out some of that sweet merch. And also, uh, we've created a member section on our page. A lot of you guys have already joined, uh, and the group chats have already started. We've seen a lot of you guys uh, posting pictures and and chatting with each other. It's awesome. Yeah, and also, we tried something new. I told everyone in the member section who we, our big uh, interview was for oh, Friday. Right, yeah. And uh, they, I took a few of the questions, and I actually asked one of the questions from one of the members. So well, look at that. Get on there if you want to ask some of these players some questions. Yeah, folks, we are interviewing active Charger players now. Austin Eckler is the starting domino to this uh, <laughs> interviews of all these active Charger players. Braden Vahoko, I, I didn't even mention that at the beginning of the episode. Braden Vahoko, folks. Friday. It's going to be the interview for this Friday's episode. Pretty damn exciting. We're back-to-back -back on active Charger players. I can't believe it. Um, but you can do all of that at chargerchat.com. Join the member section. That way, when we've got questions for some of these guys, we'll reach out to you guys, and we might ask a question that you have with some of these active Charger players, which is pretty damn exciting. Um, now, folks, it's time to go to our next segment. It's the one and only Coach's Corner. Great moments are born from great opportunity. All comes down to today. You take this helmet and you put it right in his numbers, okay? I want to see nothing but snot bubbles in his nose. A lot of people want to blame coaches for a lot of things. Nobody puts coaches <laughs> trade up. And we shut them down because we can't. It's because I believed in you. And I wish I could say something that was classy and inspirational. But it just wouldn't be our style. Let's do it. That's right, folks. It's time for Coach's Corner, and we reach into the questions and pull one out from Bobby Caldron. Good old Bobby, always Bobby. around just about every ding-dang week asking questions. Well, guess what? Coach is going to answer your question this week, and your question goes something like this. I've seen a few of the players call out our way as Coach Staley's mantra. First off, I love this. Secondly, <laughs> how much do professionals buy into these motivational messages? And how stoked are you that the players are buying into this so early? <laughs> okay, love you. Bye. <laughs> Um, so funny. Yeah, we've been hearing uh, our way. We heard it last uh, episode with Austin Eckler talking about uh, what Coach Daly's ideals were for going into this season and talking about doing it our way and we're hearing it from other players as well talking about doing it our way and so it's obviously starting to spread what does that mean to you coach as far as setting up like that clear vision with other players yeah i um first off i love it as well um secondly <laughs> i do think how much do professionals buy into this um i think i think it depends um i think in this case, these guys don't have to talk about it in interviews. Like they don't, when we, especially when Kevin interviewed Austin, like he didn't say, Hey, what's your guys' tagline? And what does it mean? <laughs> it It's just like, what are the differences? Like, what is, how, how do you, how are you around coach? What's it like? And that's what he goes to. So the fact that these things are one on the tip of all these players tongues as they're in these interviews, and this is what they want to talk about. It's clear that they've bought into it and that they're excited about what this means for the team. Um, I think although these guys are professionals, they are grown men, um, and this is their job, they're still football players. They're still athletes, and they still they still want to be a part of a team. They know that in, in football, no matter how good you are as an individual, you're not going anywhere. You're not winning any Super Bowls unless you have a team and, that, and you have a leader that everyone's bought into. Um, and, and I think that who knows that best is the vets, the vets that have been on bad teams and have been on good teams. And they know that in order to win, you have to be a team. Um, and to a certain extent, you have to push that 
what your coach is selling, you have to push it a little bit. Um, it sounds like our guys are excited about it because I don't remember hearing um, tagline like mantras from previous coaching staffs like we have so far um, with this one. So I do believe that they are fully bought in um, and the, the guys have to believe it. You know, like as much as we we like to hear it as fans and it's fun and it's nice to listen to, these guys are in meetings with coach. They're talking to him. They're texting with him. Um, they clearly believe what's behind the words. Um, this one specifically obviously is beneficial for them too. It's, it's we're going to do it our way. We're going to do what benefits our players most, what, what makes sense for the identity of our team. And I'm going to make sure that all that we do as a coaching staff and as a team and as a unit is done the way that's, that, that benefits us most. Um, so the guys, I think, most definitely from what we've heard in interviews, um, divulging this over and over and over, it's clearly been reiterated by the coaching staff, and I do think the players are buying into it. Yeah, for sure. Like the, I saw an article. Um, it was an interview with Brandon Staley, and he was talking about his players and how like they everyone has his cell phone number and people are texting him and all this stuff. And he said that Derwin James, when he was in the delivery room, was texting Brandon Staley. Wow. Watching wow. watching Rams. Oh my God. Games, Rams defense, because <laughs> he was there. You know, labor must have taken a while, but he said like that's what he was doing. That, you're buying in on that, dude. You, you know, that's that's what you want to do on your the little free time you have is to even lock in more with what's going on. That's pretty special, man. That is pretty yeah. special. Yeah, it it obviously we yeah it, you've talked about it before, Coach, on uh, getting these guys to execute. I think it was when we were talking about one of the questions was like getting these guys to tackle and not do these TSA agent paths. And it's, you, you mentioned that like these guys got to be bought in. They got to want to be there and they got to want to do these kind of things. And I think Brandon Staley, from all accounts, again, we've got to, we, we still got to see a game and see all of this transpire. But from all accounts is like, he, he's doing that. He's getting these guys to want to play and, and give that extra bit of, energy that extra 10 percent of whatever it is that they're giving just to push it that much further and make those things happen um excellent well there you go bobby thank you for asking the question coach Your broke question. it down greatly and and we learned a little bit of something about derwin james that was like yeah hold on a second honey <laughs> yeah i read that breathe. i was like i, I didn't breathe. put that in the outline i forgot to but like yeah i read that article i was like oh snap <laughs> It's crazy. Uh, Dude, Derwin like, James also hopped off of social media for a while. I just saw like oh, a, really? a post that he put on his story or something. Mm. He's like, hey, I'm I'm out for a little while. He's he's no joke, man. He's getting this after it this season. year. Yeah, he's yeah. Getting, he's he's serious. Good. We, I mm. mean, we need it, man. Like the, we He needs it. He needs a he full needs healthy it. year Dude, where yeah. he can play <laughs> to the level that he's capable of. Right. He's gonna be a great leader this year. I think he's kind of setting the tone. Um and big time. Cool. It's it very is very cool. It's very cool. Um, okay, well, let's now get out of Coach's Corner and move on over to our next segment. It's Fan Focus. Bring it into focus. All right, guys, we're here with another Fan Focus, and we have Brian from Virginia. What is up, Brian? How you doing? So glad to have you, man. This is going to be so much fun. So Thank you, thank you. The way we usually do it, man, we ask everybody, how did you become a Charger fan? Well, I was born in San Diego, uh, Mission Hills area, and... Uh, Really started when we were kids. My my cousin and I, he's kind of like a brother to me. We've always lived near each other growing up. I think it was his father, uh, his father and his uncle. And uh, they were really into, you know, the Chargers in the early 70s. And we just started watching games. You know, they were having so much fun. We just started watching games along with them uh, from time to time. And he, you know, his name's Jeremy. He really got into, uh, at an early age, following college players, you know, which I was always, you know, I'd, I would turn the game on on Sunday. and you know, I, I know who Dan Fouts and Gary Johnson, all these guys were, but he was Mr. You know, some unknown guy from, from Arkansas sure. state, you know, and I had no clue who he was, you know, where he would get this information from. It always kind of amazed me back then because you didn't have Google. You didn't have, you know, all this stuff you have nowadays. Yeah. It just kind of progressed over the years. You know, we just, we watched all the games together, go to games, uh, Padre game, all in the same stadium back then, Padre games, Charger game, just always just, just, Blossom from there. That's awesome. So, like, what's been the what have you noticed the most the difference between like, you know, your early days as a Charger fan and kind of where we are now? I lived for 
the the morning paper, you know, Nick Canepa, those kind of <laughs> articles on the sports page, you know, sure. and you run up to Vons and get the, you know, the college football magazines that would come out to try to learn about the college players if you weren't watching the games. And, and uh, you know, it's another thing, and I got to give him his credit. Hopefully his, his head won't swell too much if he watches this, but he always knew so, so much about these guys. We really got into the draft at a, back in the eighties, I think. We just started loving the off seasons every year. And um, so, you know, back then, it, if you didn't go to all the games and watch all the games and it was just the information was a lot harder to come by. And that's why I have so much appreciation for what you all do. Uh, all you guys do the podcast and the media. It's all right there at your fingertips. You know, you can learn. I learned so much from listening to you all. And um, that's just the difference. I think, you know, you can really um, you can really learn a lot in a short period of time. No, for sure. And it's so it's so fun for us, too, because the players are like videoing their lives behind the scenes. And like, we're finding out about injuries before like the newspapers would. So it's like this new, like instant information era. And I feel like it's making people even closer to the team. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. It's, um, it's one of the things I like the most, you know, about like the Twitter, you know, I've, I haven't been doing this the last few, two or three years, maybe. And, um, you know, I, sh- I shared this journey. I like to call it with my cousin, Jeremy over the last few years, meet all these people on Twitter and all these fans and all these, you know, there's so many great fans out there and the diehard bolt club and all these groups doing Jennifer Mills, all these people doing all these great things, you know, and representing the chargers fan club, so to speak. And um, it's just real fun to share everything with all those people, you know, it's so awesome, and we we appreciate because you always like blast out all of the uh, Charger podcasts. You're like, listen to these guys, <laughs> listen to these guys. And we thank you, man. It's like it's this it's a tight knit community. I feel like we're just like people give us a hard time because there's not a lot of us, but man, are we we're getting tighter and tighter by the day. Like it's impenetrable force field of Charger fans. There you go. Well, you guys really know what you're talking about. All 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 of you do, you know. And you guys put in the work, and that's that's kind of why it was so hard to get information back in the seventies, eighties, you know, as a kid and growing up, you know, and, and to just be able to have it there and all the hard work you guys do, all the work you put in, I'm sure it's a lot harder than some of us realize, you know, gathering the information and putting the podcast together. It's just, it's really nice. Yeah. We really appreciate the support, man. So, all right. Well, my last question for you, um, the season's coming fast. We're <laughs> training camps coming, man. What are you most excited for this year? Man, I guess if everyone hasn't seen, you know, Mr. Mr. Uh, Spaz optimism on Twitter, but um, you know, obviously Herbert and line, all the, all the regular things that people would say, but for me, it's the coaching staff. You know, it's, it seems like we've always had something missing, you know, from the staff and, and, you know, I really like Marty Schottheimer, like a lot of people did. And I'm not here to bash any past coaching staffs, but it just, it just really seems like this guy's got his stuff together. You know, I'm just, I can't wait to see maybe it takes a quarter season, half season for it all to click in, but, I just really can't wait to see what what effect having a, a staff like this does to this team. I mean, the talent was there, I think. So. No, it's been it's been there. That's the problem. That's what's so infuriating as a Charger fan. It's like you have all these guys that you're not maximizing their potential, and it feels like I'm fully with you. It feels like Staley is going to maximize these guys, and we're a shamelessly positive. You're crazy <laughs> positive. Like I just, we just love it, man. So we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Um, it was great meeting you and chatting with you. Nice to meet you also. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Dude, Brian, man. Good to see you, dude. Like I yeah, you're constantly on Twitter and I'm constantly liking your tweets, man. So good to good to have you on the podcast, buddy. That was great meet, meeting him. An honorary K Love You Bye. Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. K Love You Bye. Um yeah, man, that the it absolutely feels different. I, and I think we, you guys said it best. Like we've had the talent. Like we list some of these names and it's just like to us, like these are rock star names. Like these are yeah. guys, these we are did have a studs. Pot- we, had, we had a pottery barn offensive line. But, so. Which is why we didn't really mention their names very often unless <laughs> his name was Dan Feeney. And even then it was kind of hard to say, but it was just because we liked the guy. Yeah, that's right. We- and it was cool chatting with him and, you know, meeting Charger fans that have been fans since the 80s. Like I, yeah. I love bringing the old and new together and he's, he's a really awesome guy and it was great chatting with him. I was glad he's, he was able to come on. Yeah, big time. Thank you, Brian, for coming on. And Thanks, brother. Can't wait to see you at some of these games. Uh, but now, folks, it's time to move on over to the next segment. You know them, you love them. It's Craig from Texas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on in, man. Kick your feet up. The oh. Craig. Experience. Hello there. Make yourself at home. 
Got some stuff to talk about, right? Moving on. Quick heads up. If you're watching this on video and at any point you see my eyes roll into the back of my head, don't panic. I'll be just fine. Just give me about 10 or 15 seconds to come to. Um, I just began this new 90 day workout program and no joke today, midway through my training session, I thought I saw the light. Like I thought it was about to be over. Um, started thinking about all the decisions I made in my past, whether or not the pearly gates were going to open up for me. And right before I reached out for that light, um, I came too. So apparently I'm fine. And uh, there's nothing to worry about, right? Because what doesn't make you stronger kills you. Okay, I promise I'm done with the Patrick Mahomes stuff. It's kind of getting old, right? But, you know, I couldn't help myself. Anyway, CC gang, big salute to the rest of the Bolt fam. What's going on? It's your guy Craig in Texas, and welcome to another edition of the Craig Experience. And that's right, camp time. Time to see who's who and what's what. Time for the smoke to clear and us to get a better look at our squad going into 2021. I am ready. And just for the past couple of weeks, I've chatted with you guys a bit about the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. So we can't leave out that third and super important phase of the game where the Chargers just can't seem to get right. And I mean, it's been for years now. Special teams. I won't bog you down with rankings and stats. We all know the story. We all remember 2010, first in offense, first in defense, historically bad on special teams. Let's hope and pray that we can at least be middle of the road this time around. Um, but I do feel like we're in pretty good hands. Uh, just like the rest of the staff, man, Darius Swinton is pretty impressive. Every time the dude does an interview, um, he, he comes off as super personable. He's got this great energy. And it just seems like he has a really good handle on, you know, what needs to be done. So let's hope that that's the case. Um, I mean, just even outside of that, we can talk about some of the key contributors that I think are going to be really, really good for the team. Even some of the rookies. You've got, you know, your Larry Roundtree, who, you know, we'll see exactly how much special teams he ends up playing as the year goes on. Because I have a really strange feeling that he's going to work his way into that running back rotation. But he'll at least start off there. And the dude told us all he knows that his way onto this roster and onto the field is probably going to start via special team. So sign me up for anybody who wants to be in that type of car crash. Uh, special teams is no joke. Uh, you take a lot of shots, you give them out. You got to be a different type of animal to love that stuff. So outside of just him, you got Nick Neiman, who eventually will probably find his way onto the field, but will have to, you know, earn his chops on special teams, a lot like Drew Tranquil did. The kid's an athlete, and, and that'll come in handy there as well. And then we've got the return game. Um, Nas is going to be the guy at free safety, so I seriously doubt he'll be back there returning kicks. Uh, I don't see that happening very often, which means the guy who was supposed to be doing it all along, Joe Reed, should have a really good shot at earning that job uh, back, should I say. Because we know that he started off there and then, you know, he was kind of all over the place, active some weeks and the weeks that he was active. Sometimes he wasn't on return, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. That's old news. Uh, the wild card here, though, is a name that no one's really talking about. Uh, Austin Prohl, Ricky's boy. He could actually end up being a punt returner for this team. Uh, of course, he would have to carve out that spot, which means someone else on the wide receiving court would have to go. Uh, I'm not going to name any names. We all know there's a particular guy out of Ohio State who I think is skating on thin ice already. And mm -hmm, wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't make it. But again, just keep an eye on Pro because I think there is a real uh, possibility for him making the squad. And then we talk about the kickers, which pains me because Michael Badgley is a University of Miami guy. I'm a fan of the U, have been for several years. So I was super happy when we got a kid from the U on our squad who seemed like he was going to be the guy for a while. But so many instances last year where I'm surprised the neighbors didn't call the police on me from all the violent screams coming from my house based on Michael Badgley Shanks or... Uh, let's not go there. It brings me to a dark place. Um, but there's a lot of competition there. 
you know, you've got, you know, Alex Kestman and Tristan Viscano. Hopefully I'm saying the names correctly. And I mean, we'll see what happens during camp. Just never know how that's going to go down. But uh, all of it is really exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing how all this stuff pans out because special teams has to be better this year. I mean, it's hard for it to get worse. Really, really hoping that I don't regret saying that. Anywho, my question this week for you fellas, what do you think the charges end up at the end of the year in regards to special teams rankings? Um, I don't foresee it being a back of the NFL, back of the league ranking again. So are you thinking middle of the road? You thinking they're in the top 10? Just give me your best guesstimate here. I'm not saying anything because I don't want to jinx it. So uh, you guys go ahead and be braver than me and uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Anyway, you know what it is. As usual, every day, all day, forever. Bowganger don't bang. Okay. Love you. Bye. It's a good question, Craig. It's a good Glad question. Glad you didn't die on us, man. Yeah, like, for Pete's sake, dude. Like, do you, what do you need to work out. out more for? What's going on? You're just jacked, bro. Yeah. I, I mean, I get <laughs> you probably like splurged while you were on vacation and had maybe a few extra donuts than you should have. But man, it ain't worth it to... <laughs> To, to say hey to Jesus for a hot second before coming back to earth. Um, well, good, good breakdown, Craig. Thanks for taking a look at the special teams. Cause it is really like we were, we were the worst. So I, I got to imagine that we're going to be at least better than the worst this next upcoming season. But, um, it's a lot. It's another, a lot of unknowns. Like we got to see some of these guys like actually put some work in and, and, and we got to know who's going to be in those positions, like the kicking position. We don't know who those guys are going to be. Who's going to be returning uh, punts and kickoffs and things like that. I just, I'd be so happy if they were just middle of the road. We don't talk about them. Just very basic 16th team, 15 or 16 ranked special teams like i think you have that on top of what we're going to have on offensive defense it's hard, it's, it's going to be hard for them for other teams so that's what i expect because I, I haven't seen anything yet i don't Dar darius swinton hasn't been a full-blown special teams coach on his own yet so he's mm -hmm. been an assistant up to this point so right I, it, it's exciting to see what we're going to do i think the biggest thing is going to be what happens with our kicker like we're going to get returns they're going to work all that stuff out it's what's going to happen with our kicker. If it's going to be Badgley, and I'm I'm honestly getting kind of bummed about it because you see Badgley at like the Invitational and he's yep. hanging out with Herbert yep. and all this stuff. Like in the back of his mind is like, I got to compete with two other guys to try and make this team. So I, that's the one thing I'm kind of interesting, interested to find out what they're going to do. I don't think we're going to hear too much about it until like the last cut day and figure out what's going on. But because they don't really talk about how many kicks were made and you know practice that day <laughs> right. but you know we'll see we'll see that's what i'm interested to see in middle of the road yeah I think i'm happy yeah that. that's where i'm at too i want it's almost like if you're if your special teams is too good that means you have too you have too many guys on your roster that are just kind of middle of the pack guys right like you you want to have like that number one offense number one defense and that middle of the pack special teams because those are the guys that that sh shouldn't be really be playing as much um, on the offensive defense side of the ball. For instance, I looked at last year, um, just right now while you were talking, so thanks for buying me time. My pleasure. Um, the, um, the Chiefs were the number 20 ranked special teams and the Bucks, who were the two Super Bowl teams, were the number 23rd ranked team, team wow. on special teams. So that, that's kind of what you're aiming for is middle of the pack. You have that, that great offense or defense, and then that middle of the pack just don't blow it on special teams kind of team. Um, obviously, New England... Um, is an exception to that statement that I just made. Cause they're always top, top five, top three special teams. Hmm. And they're usually always very good. Um, but yeah, I I'm, I'm with our roster on offensive defense. I'm good with the middle of the pack special teams. Give me 15 to 20 and we are solid. Sign me up. Yeah. Just good enough to do the job, get it done. Right. Minor mistakes here and there, but otherwise just don't, it up like just. i just i don't want to stress every time we're about to punt exactly. that it's going to get blocked right. like exactly. i just I, just take that off of me i just like you can miss a few kicks it's okay just stop getting shit blocked right That's all i want the same way that craig sees the light when he works out too hard Huggin sees the light when <laughs> the, the ball gets hiked for a kickoff he just oh God, he passes no, out for a hot no. second and then he comes back <laughs>
<laughs> and then he goes uh-huh. and sits on his computer and watches Brian song and falls asleep. <laughs> yeah. right there uh, nice, nice throwback. That's yeah. happened. That was a that is a call back and a half right <laughs> there. There you go. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it being a little bit higher than middle of the road, but I don't foresee us going from zero to a hundred in one off season with unknown, with new coaching staff, with yeah. just Young too many players. unknowns. There's yeah. too many unknowns. Yeah, you don't go from sewer dweller to the throne overnight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> from the sewer dweller to the throne. All right. Um, but great, great question, Craig, and great. And again, thank you for breaking down those special teams. We really do appreciate it because you just you you take a lot of look into that detail. And I mean, we're not writing Michael Badgley off. If he comes back next he's our guy. season, we'll he's support the hell out of him. All in. Yeah. yeah. We hundred percent support him. And we I trust the coaching staff to know what they're getting themselves into if they right. do decide to put push their chips in on Michael Badgley. So um yeah Love Michael Badgley. Would love to see him back next year, but he's he's got to fight for his job, and we'll find out what happens. But uh, let's move on out of the Craig experience and go into Ask Bolt Fam. Sweet. A lot of, uh, lot of questions this week in Ask Bolt Fam, and we started off with Coach Lago, who asked the question. Bloy me. You blokes did a bloody proper job on the match. The logo of your mugs is cracking. The bolt contracts must have been bloody electric, eh, wool dog and coach? <laughs> but I better crack on. Do you lads find yourselves being cheeky with muppets of our rivals in daily life? I do, cause f*** those wankers. <laughs> if I see a bloody faders license plate or sticker, I pass the gear to make him stare at my Bolts. A bit deaf, isn't it? <laughs> I got another point calling my name so I don't throw bloody wobbly. Yeah, can't love you, boy. <laughs> Whoa, that's like authentic. That was an authentic <laughs> script right there. That, that was, was good. good. Well written, Coach Lago. Yeah, staring at my bolts. I Okay, uh, let me start this off. I must wear like Raider deodorant because I interact <laughs> with Raiders on an unbelievable rate <laughs> i've had my hair cut by a raider fan i received a covid vaccine from a raider fan i had a raider fan fix my ac unit i can't escape them in idaho oh, God. and as much as i want to like front and like throw down i know that i'm the only charger fan up here so it's like i I know that there's more of them than there are of me. So I, well, those, I, those are also not situations where you want to be talking much. Yeah, no. Right. As the lady's about to give you a shot. All yeah. Right. Or, yeah. or my a haircut. Or, or car, oh, your AC car in the middle of summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as much as I want to throw down, I need at least a posse of like two. <laughs> to, I wish to, we could be there to help you. I know. You call, I wish you could phone be calls. Dude, we come zoom flying us in, in, dude. We will be there. <laughs> yeah, for we'll you. zoom your back hard. I'm like bloody on the floor. I'm like, wait, let me call my friends. <laughs> Say something to them. <laughs> Get them. Make them feel bad. Yeah. Get them, guys. <laughs> um, and and. And Kev, I know that you deal with. I don't. No, I have other fans on a regular. I basis. go the other. I tip heavy the f- the other way. <laughs> um, I just don't care. And if somebody wants to say, I, there's somebody at the gym. I went to the gym. Oh really? This, it was this morning, and oh, wow. uh, I was wearing a Charger shirt, and the guy's like, "You're one of those." I was like, "What the? What are you?" <laughs> Fuck yeah, I am. Look at my shirt, dickhead. Yes, I am a Charger fan. I'm a human being. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what are you? What, what team do you like? You like you chief? He's like, no, I'm I'm a Saints fan. I'm like, well, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? We Get out of my face. Together. Yeah. Yeah. So you suck it. Yeah, your so. stadium's named after a Vegas casino now, and that's close to the Raiders, so fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to get better at it because I, I, when we, when I get to games, I can get a little mouthy, and I don't want to get in trouble and shit. So I'm working on it. I, well, at least you're like kind of releasing the steam throughout the year, as opposed to waiting for a game to just totally unload on some right. unsuspecting yeah. opposing team fan. But yeah. uh, how about hardest, you, Coach? The hardest part about people knowing that I'm a diehard Charger fan is they just mess. They just mess with me. You know, yeah. like. 
they barely have any affiliation with any team. <laughs> but all of a sudden, when they're around me, that's all they could talk about. I'm like, shut. You don't. What? You're not a 49er <laughs> fan. Shut up. Like, <laughs> I, I would be. I would like a conversation with you, but you don't know anything. So just stop. You know, like I feel like I'd love to talk football, but you don't have it. But yeah, yeah. it's like I don't want to be mad at you. I don't. I don't care who you like. But if just don't be a fraud you know and that for me that's like what i feel like i come across most and living in san diego still unfortunately for me i'm not in like an opposing team's territory i'm just surrounded by some haters that i some salty a lot of a salty lot. Folk, yeah a lot of yeah. salty yeah that's that's, that's almost and, that, that's almost worse because it's like yeah they were former fans but now they just they know enough about the team right. to really hit you hard i'm get i get very it's easy for me to shut down the stupid things people say out here in Missouri because they just don't know what they're talking about. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah, but yeah, I, harder. for me, I can't, I can't like, I'm just like, yeah, sorry. Don't know. Like, sucks sorry, not you're sorry not a fan anymore, but yeah, I don't know what you do on Sunday. You go to church and then just take a nap because you don't yeah. have any football to watch. So <laughs> that sucks. You sure do talk about it a lot for somebody that doesn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, great question, Coach Lago. Thanks for asking it. We move on to another old favorite of ours, Jeeves. Jeeves. Because the D is silent. silent. D. <laughs> yep. Don't Who asked the question? Always. What's up, baby? I checked out the merch and it's beautiful, baby. <laughs> I got a couple T's. I'm hoping to rock at training camp, baby. Well, anyway, baby, I figured out what so many defensive coaches have been struggling with. Baby, how to keep Tom Brady from winning another Super Bowl, baby. Shh, coming close, it's a secret. Put his bitch ass on the whack ass Raiders, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right, baby, because f*** him. <laughs> okay, back to business, baby. As far as my question goes, baby. I heard this on the judge's podcast. I was wondering your take, baby. Who? <laughs> Who are the top five players with the most to lose? And the top five with the most to win in training camp, <laughs> baby. <laughs> That's all I got, baby. <laughs> oh yeah, and f <laughs> the Raiders, baby. <laughs> Dick out. <laughs> That's the segue, baby. K Men's K promo, baby. K love you, bye, baby. <laughs> 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 you got it. You got to skid on that one. Jeez, oh. Steve is silent. Oh, oh my God. Ooh. Oh, the, what was the question? Baby! <laughs> That's too busy. All laughing. right. Top without, five. Without Dick most, Vital yeah. getting involved. Top five. My, my headphones are hot from all that sweating. <laughs> top, <laughs> air them out. Top five players with the most to win and top five players with the most to lose. Now, I don't think well, we're each going to Isn't that kind of the five. same? Well, okay. So most to win is like somebody who's low, but if they do well, they can like rise up the ranks really quickly. And the most to lose, I would say somebody like Michael Badgley has the most to lose right now because he's got yeah. two other guys waiting in the wings to, to okay. take his I, job. I think you're looking at the top, you know, the second, third, and fourth round picks. Those are the guys the most right. to gain. Like, you're looking at... Um, Asante. Asante. You're looking right. at Palmer. You're looking at Trey McKitty. You're looking at these guys that yep. a lot of us, when they were drafted, were like, okay, we'll see what happens. They have a lot, they have a lot, to, lot to gain from, yeah. from this. I so. think... Yeah, I think Mike Williams. Uh, oh, I guess that I don't know. I guess I'm dumb and don't understand the question. But Mike Williams <laughs> and Derwin James have the most to gain and lose based on what happens this year. Um, I think because, it's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you're off on that. Because Mike Williams, if he has a great year, he's going to get paid. Right. And if he doesn't have a great year, it's, it's his prospects are. He's not going to get that as much money. So it's like he has a lot to gain and lose based on how his performance goes this year. Derwin. Um, I know he's, we already signed him to that little fifth year deal, but he has not had a full year yet done, right. like played and 
He's got a lot. He's got a lot to gain season. and lose here. Working into an extension, hopefully. Um, I mean, that's why you give him the fifth year is to keep him under contract so we can extend him. We don't want to ride that thing out. So um, hopefully he gets it done this year and we can. He, he, I mean, he has a lot. Obviously, like you said, uh, Badgley and those draft pick guys, they they have a lot to gain. But um, Keenan and Derwin could go either way. Yeah, I, I think Badgley's probably Badgley's at the top of like most to lose. Like, yeah, <clears throat> it's so clear that he exactly. has like any. You could see who's going to make him lose. There's two guys on the current roster that could mess it up for him. So that's 100%. a very clear answer on that one. Yeah, I think he's definitely at the top of that of that category. Um, and I think you're right on the, on the on on the draft players and even some of the undrafted guys like Kyler Fackrell has the most to gain. Sure, being in that like we got mm. him on the cheap. If he if he buys into Staley's system as much as these other players do and performs as well as we hope for him to do in that position, like he he his stock could rise, and so he could definitely have the most to gain. So. Um, we threw a few names out there, Jeebs, uh, but, <laughs> Baby. I think, <laughs> but I think we're, we're all have less oxygen in our brain from laughing as hard as that question. Thanks dude. <laughs> made us. So thank you for asking that question, Jeebs. We do appreciate it. That was awesome. Uh, the next on the list is DXU eight, three certified, fresh, certified, fresh, brand new asking questions goes something like this. The thoughts on the possibility of the Chargers trading a wide receiver. I'm thinking T. Bill or Guyton could get a fifth or sixth, and Mike Will could get a third on a DB. How about the Saints being a potential trade partner with our coaching connections? And the fact Michael Thomas will be out the quarter of the season. What do you guys think? Love your work. Keep it up and fuck the Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is an interesting. I hadn't thought about this at all no. yet. The idea of we do have a lot of depth at wide receiver now. It seems like yeah, somebody's going to get cut. So if, if you're going to cut someone, can you get something out of it before you have to make that decision? Yeah. And so I don't think Mike Mike Williams. We've already clearly gone all in on him. Correct. We yeah. had an opportunity before that, whatever that date was, to to make a move on him, and that didn't happen. So right. I don't think Mike Williams is getting traded. But the idea of um, T Billy or Guyton or even a, a Joe Reed or KJ Hill, if you could get something for them without, because what somebody's, I mean, you you can't have all these guys uh, on the roster. I wouldn't right. imagine to have a, a balanced team. Well, we talk about this all the time. It's like having solid backup guys that are going to get you through a 17 game season. Like mm. that's, that's, that's just a lot of football to play and you need to have that flexibility. So I, I would like to keep our guys where they are, let them develop another year. Cause I think T bill and Guyton, they had great seasons last year, but people are probably thinking it's kind of a fluky deal. You know what I mean? Well, like, yeah, but you could sell them on the high and like get something for them because think, they had that big year. I think next year they could be even higher and you could get even more for them. Yeah, it's just hard. Like I, I get, I understand that. Yeah, guys are gonna get hurt. You have to have depth, um, but you have that at every single position. Every position right. needs depth, and a lot of them get a lot more dinged up than a receiver usually does. So you need depth at linebacker. You need right. depth on the line. DB, you need depth like you at mentioned. running back. You need depth at DB. So it's like you need depth everywhere for a seventeen game season. I just, <laughs> I can't imagine giving up seven player, and they don't really play that much special team. Maybe. Uh, uh, a flyer out there on the edge, um, but like they're not doing a whole lot on special teams. So it's a hard spot to just give up so much stock. So I could see maybe, uh, and I wouldn't, because you brought this up, like thinking it through, I don't know if I would be terribly upset. It'd be nice to have them all because I like T-Billy and Jalen Guy and they, they yeah. did a great job last year and they they stepped up when guys were hurt. Um, but we went and drafted another guy. We drafted Josh Palmer. Joe Reed still, I think, has a lot of potential, especially in this new system. Right. So it's just it's just a backlog there of guys that are just gonna be sitting on the bench until somebody be a, gets hurt. Speaking of the camp starting, like that's gonna be fun battle to watch to see who comes out because this is a new coaching right. staff. There, everyone's right. there's a couple guys at the top that aren't going anywhere. Keenan, obviously, Mike, obviously, right. but everyone else, you're kind of clean slating, man. You got a <laughs> brand new, fresh piece of paper. The coaches are gonna take notes on you, so you know, show out. Exactly. Yeah, I I think we've got we're we're pretty stacked at wide receiver and not in other positions so if we were to trade one of these guys for one of those positions that we do need some some help in as far as depth is concerned uh i wouldn't hate it um as far as guys that i would be willing to give up 
I mean, I'm, I think T Billy's going to have a great year. I, I think he's got that opportunity. Guyton, as much as I love him, I mean, we've only had really one year with each of those guys. So Guyton had those drops. He, yeah, he had a couple of drops, and a Palmer is kind of a similar deep ball kind of guy. So, right. I, yeah, I could see Jalen being a potential. It, even if, if, yeah, if Guyton gets traded, my heart won't be broken. If T. Billy gets traded, I would go, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got a unique skill set that I don't think everyone on the yeah. team's got. He's yeah, got I mean, a certain set of skills. He's got a certain set of skills. Terrible for a team like you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, T. Billy just had a lot of those deep balls last year and helped Herbert get those stats that he got. So I would like, and I, I know Guyton did too, but I, I think T. Billy has more more of an upside to me. That's just that's just my opinion. Let's but just we'll, be honest. We had those those couple of drops are just burned in our memories. Yeah, they're kind of seared in there. <sighs> but he had some great catches, though. He you did have some, some great catches. Great We're trying catches. to remember the positive side of things, uh, Guyton, and hopefully Shamelessly. we just keep them all around and and they can just have a they great all do season. Great. They, everybody just does good. Everybody wins. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, there you go. Thank you for asking the question, DXU83. We move on now to Kevin Kernick, who asked the question. Training camp is here. Our squad is currently not at full roster capacity, so we have room to add a couple veterans to fill out the depth. Jalila Dai is on Telesco's speed dial. He dials star eight and gets a direct line to a Dai's agent. However, Trey Boston intercepts the call. Both these guys pitch their cases to join the team. I'm calling my shot. We'll sign one of them. Any free agents out there you'd like us to add this week? All right, that was my that was my best Winston Churchill. I like it. It was good. And we'll fight them on the beaches, in the air. Well, I don't think, he, speaking of interceptions, I don't think either one of these guys is going to be doing much of that. So I don't know if I'd be that thrilled to pick up either one of these guys. And they don't feel like these two players don't feel like they're set up to do kind of what we're wanting to do on defense this year. Really? You know, they just don't have, I don't know. I I wouldn't be that thrilled if they added these. Guys. I, I mean, I get the mentality. Like we've had these guys on the team before and they've got some of that connection, but with a brand new coaching staff, it's like, what have you done for me lately? That mentality. Yeah. Like, I don't know that they're necessarily got the in. I mean, outside of Tom Telesco, but Tom Telesco is not coaching this team. Yeah, they're, both those guys are kind of those thumper guys that you put in the box every once in a while. Um, more of, I, don't, I know they both technically can play the free, um, but in my mind, they're kind of more of that strong safety type of body and and play style. Um, I've, and I know he's, it's already, by the time this comes out, he'll probably already be signed, but Malik Hooker is a guy that I've talked about a lot this offseason. Um, he had some injuries there in Indianapolis, um, but I I just think that would be a really nice plug and play type of guy. Um, even if even if he's not starting right away, if they do not, they give the nod to uh, Nasir. I think it would be a great vet pickup. It, it, right now, it's looking like he's going to the Cowboys, but that's the guy that I've right. kind of been holding on hope for a while. Yeah, it it seems to be that's the team that he's going to be going to and there really hasn't been any rumblings though with Tom Telesco being as tight-lipped as he is I don't know that we'd hear any rumblings of anybody potentially coming to this team so if somebody does I feel like it's going to be a surprise we're not going to see it coming and it's just going to pop us right in the mouth and we're just going to be like oh my god why did you hit me in the mouth <laughs> um yeah, they've just been so conservative this offseason like they they went hard and heavy during initial free agency which we were all like whoa right damn big splashes were made there yeah but then it just kind of stopped you know what i mean so i i i don't have that many expectations my expect i'm not, it's not i'm not that high that we're going to be bringing in like a bigger name guy i think yeah. it's going to be I, more staley to, developing some of these guys yeah to that point though a jaleel adai and a trey boston are not big names those are filler guys for sure Mm -hmm. Um, so I do think that there's potential to bring in either, either of those guys back. Um, and we'll see. And obviously that changes what you call. And our coach seems to roll with the punches with what they, what they like to run. So, uh, and with two high safeties is you don't have to have a true free at all times. So, um, yeah, it'll, I would not, I would not be shocked 
if Jaleel Odai is back on the roster to some ex- to some capacity here soon. Yeah, we'll we'll see if if we get bit by the injury bug again. Knocking on wood that that doesn't occur. Um, but I, I I agree with with my boys here. I don't know that they're necessarily going to be first on the list, but we'll have to wait and see. Great question, Kevin. We move on now to Mac Huber. Is he certified? Certified fresh? fresh. I think he's certified fresh. You know Excellent. It. Mac Huber asking questions goes something like this. When do y'all think Derwin James will get an extension? With Jamal Adams about to become the highest paid safety, do you think it will be smart for Teleska to get it done early? <laughs> I think he might want to do that, but I don't think, I think Derwin's going to bet on himself and hold out and try and have an amazing year and get, be yeah. the highest paid safety yeah. in the league. Yeah. Right. I don't think he want it. Yeah. He doesn't his want mind, to sign if, if he were to if he were to sign his big extension right now, it it wouldn't be the Jamal Adams money because we all know how good he is as Charger fans, but he's only had one season that he's played and it was his rookie year. Mm-hmm. Um both the other ones he's missed so much time that you're you're not gonna get top dollar. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen until the end of the in um going into next year's um offseason. Um I'm praying that it happens. That means he had a great year this year. Um, and we make him a very wealthy man. I think he's going to, I think if he can stay healthy, what Staley will do for him will be, he won't want to go anywhere because I think he's going to have one of the best seasons he's had. So the Chargers are just going to have to pony up and pay him because, you know, we need him. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys that you don't find. They're not, they're not laying around waiting to be brought in. And he just, he's not that guy. He's, he's very special player. So (laughs) you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. (laughs) Uh, yeah, well, I think good arguments are made for wanting to get him signed earlier than later. But again, I think we got to at least let this year pass and see what happens this year. He's still in contract another year after this. We had that extension on him already. So he's not going to hit free agency next year. So we can get all that done next year. Right. This year would be a good uh, litmus test as far as trying to figure out what we expect to see from him going forward. Stay Um, healthy. Just stay healthy, bro. That's all you got to do. But thank you for asking the question, Mac. We move on now to Kia. Certified Fresh. Certified Fresh. Asking questions something like this. Eh, Bonjour. So I was just wondering because you probably know the answer. What is Justin Herbert's hair smell like? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Does it smell flowery or does it smell like herbal essence (laughs) or perhaps it smells like brisket and as a follow-up what do you guys do to keep your beards so uh je tem uh (laughs) bon we hey (laughs) could you please do a really bad french accent well there you go that's that's some guy who (laughs) who can't do a good french accent all right uh, all right, so Justin Herbert's hair. I like what you did there, herb, herb essence. I like what you did there. But I think what his hair smells like is protein powder because we know that he lives with their fullback who sprinkles. Gabe him neighbors with gets a little messy with the protein powder. Yeah, the protein tinker protein bell. Tinker bell. You know, yeah. so it depends on the quality. Hair. Yeah, it's just like it seeps in. I didn't get grew you. back so fast. Oh, yeah, protein. Okay. It's got protein hair. Is that what I got to do to get my fucking hair to come back? <laughs> nah. Put a little protein powder up there. Jeez, he hey, it's worth a try. Not I worth think a shot yeah. at this point. <laughs> it's worth it a shot. <laughs> Yeah, worth a shot. Yeah, good, good question. But and then as far as keeping our beards, we are, we are kind of a bearded I'm kind brethren. Of, I'm not good at mine. Mine's real bad. It, so. No, it it well, it looks a lot better than it has. In the we past. started doing this podcast. I used to not have a beard before the pandemic, and I grew one to try and match these guys. And I'm I'm like the little brother trying to catch up. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I. Cute. <laughs> Uh, personally, like my beard is a lot shorter than it has been. I normally try to keep it longer, but anytime I trim it up, it always, I always trim it up way too damn short. Um, but do you use any of the oils? Oh, or yes. The, oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've never, too. I've never dabbled in the beard oil yet. Oils yeah. are where it's at, man. Oils are good. Like I, I give it a good wash. Uh, I give it a towel dry. I put a little oil in there and I let <laughs> it sit for a little bit, let it soak into the, to the hair fibers. 
And then I do a, a nice blow dry with a round brush and kind of curl <laughs> yeah, it in. You really? I 100% do. Sick. Are oh, you kidding shit. me? You get a beard that looks this good. You got to do use the blow dry don't with a round wake brush. Up. Yeah, you yeah. I don't wake up looking this great. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, that's that's the best way to to take care of your so beard. So as you can tell, we Kyle and I don't do anything, and Adam knows what's up. Knows oh. what's going on. I've watched the I, YouTube videos. I cannot <laughs> grow my beard past like what I'm at now, or. The missus is not, is not very happy. <laughs> I do I do want to shout uh, Kia Kia out because she goes to our alma mater. She goes to That's RB. Right. Oh, yes. go Broncos! Yeah, yeah, go Broncos! And she's exactly twenty years Wait, behind not, our graduation. Not go Broncos! Um, go Rancho we Bernardo. Bleed, we bleed blue. We bleed blue. Yeah, yeah. that's better. The, oh, Rancho Bernardo. H S R B H S. Fight! 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 Yeah, but yeah. we're literally 20 years separated. She's still in high school there. That's crazy. You know, that's awesome. So That is awesome. Go RB. Love it. Thank you, Kia, for asking the question. We move on now to Neroy92. Certified fresh. Certified. There's a lot of, fr- a lot of fresh Everybody. folk. I love yeah. it. So fresh and so awesome. clean. So clean, clean. Asking questions. Something like this. I'm puzzled <laughs> by the pundits who don't think offensive coordinator Lombardi can't work with Mike Williams to shine in the X role. I've seen many times 81 blocking smaller corners out with his massive frame. Ask coach to break it down. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I I, I haven't heard that. I probably I'm sure it's true if you have. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how you don't take advantage of Mike Williams. The guy's a jump ball guy. Mm-hmm. But like Go deep. <laughs> That's what an OC has to do to take advantage of Mike Williams. Right. You know, like whether that, whether people are saying they're not, that um, Lombardi's not going to expand his role, I don't know. Uh, it would be nice to see him do, try, at least try some different things. Uh, but we know he can go do the deep ball. And that's what he's paid to do. And any offensive coordinator could take advantage of that. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see him being less utilized than he was in the old system because that's pretty much all we did then. So, Anything else would be an improvement to, to to the role that he had prior. And I think that after talking with Austin, you know, he says that he's getting lined up in all kinds of crazy places, right. and it's all about those matchups and getting the playmakers the ball. I, th- I think that's what is going to happen. I think, right? And he's a playmaker, dude. He's one of the bigger ones we have. Yep, um, yeah, he comes down with those balls Cl- so I think, in a clutch clutch situation. Clutch. So I think yeah. he's definitely whoever said that. I think is you know, I don't know what's wrong with them, but it, I think they're wrong. They're yeah, absolutely. F- they probably also thought Justin Jefferson should be offensive rookie of the year, but yeah, it's a, fight, it's a Viking. <laughs> it's probably a I, I, dude. I love it. I can tell the football season's coming because the shit talk is starting and oh, people yeah. are starting mm, to stir stuff up. Dive. I love to mm. just jump in on Twitter on the thread <laughs> and somebody will say something really stupid and I'll just put in like a meme of like uh, you know just anything just to throw some shade. You mad, bro? Something you mad, like bro? That. Why are you so mad, bro? <laughs> You're not that guy, pal. You're not yeah. that guy, pal. <laughs> not that guy, pal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good question, Neroy. Thank you for asking it. We move on now to Eric Quait. Certified fresh. Certified fresh. Asking the question, hey, guys, how bad was Joshua Kelly really? He played behind one of the worst old lines I've ever seen. <laughs> I personally think he was a victim of predictable play calls and that doomed a lot of his runs thanks kelly got pottery barn dude that's for sure <laughs> i i mean the word on the street was like he got dog kind of a good yeah he got dog house it, it was the hard. fumbles man we that, yeah. that, fumble. you can't blame the offensive line on you fumble no the ball. he fumbled the ball he was in the dog house you, anthony lynn was a former running back he just you know i feel like he like tough loved the running backs more than probably other positions because that's what he knows and that's what he is. I think he's a I think he could be a very good backup running back. I think yes. he's he's serviceable and that first game he played, he was looking good. He was making yeah. cuts. It was I prefer his running style over um Jackson. Justin Jackson, yeah. So I you know, I I like what I see there. My kind of setup would be Austin, Kelly and and Roundtree. Like I think that's I think that's a good a good mix up. Yeah, I think Kelly got the the couple fumbles that was not, and I, I do think that messed with his confidence a little bit. Uh, I think he was thinking about that too much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, any anytime you're behind the worst offensive line in the league, you're not going to have a successful running game. 
and, and it was forced and yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't good and he was just not good on special teams like he he missed a lot of blocks like a few of those pump mm. blocks came directly from him so I think it was like an overall thing. I don't think he was a bad running back per se. I think he wasn't yeah. reliable on those two phases he needed to be reliable on, and that's what put yeah. him in the doghouse last year. And we also have to remember that these rookies didn't have a training camp. They Zero. were all Zoom. Yeah. So it's like Justin absolutely blew it out of the water, like expectations. Anomaly. Yeah. Yeah, and he made it unrealistic for all of the other rookies to live up to what we were hoping for. So. Right. Um, hopefully a whole off season any, any rookie, like there's going to be growing pains getting used to the NFL. So Big I think time. the charger chat is, is high on Joshua Kelly and hoping he does a lot better this year. Absolutely. It, it just, it was surprising when Austin Eckler went down that our lead running back was Kalen Balaj, like a guy they brought him in. They brought him in. Exactly. They didn't have confidence. Right. And not in Kelly or really Justin Jackson. Justin Jackson was like the... Couldn't stay healthy. Well, couldn't stay healthy, but also he was like the change-up running back. And it wasn't right. really Joshua Kelly. Joshua Kelly's touches really went went way down. So I think with this new coaching staff, I think they can probably build his confidence up a lot more and give him that ability. And obviously we've rebuilt the offensive line, so that's going to help him out as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all for Joshua Kelly coming back this year. But uh, thank you for asking the question, Eric Hoyt. Uh, we move on now to Shik Soto, who asked the question. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. If you could choose one Chargers legend dead or alive, who would you bring back to play with our bolts for this season only? Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Behave. Oh, behave. <laughs> All right. Good question, though. Like, what? So it's not just like who's your favorite player you'd like to bring back. Who is bring a guy back that, just for this season? Yeah, like that. Somebody that could fill in maybe a hole. A big that, void. Yeah. So I would I would like to say Rodney Harrison because free safety freak that made crazy plays. Yeah. But I don't think he would make it through a you season. He would He'd transition be fined to this. And yeah. ejected and <laughs> yeah. he would never he would never make it. Yeah. So I can't I can't say Rodney Harrison. So I need a second to think. What do you guys answer? The the one that it, it wasn't I don't know. It wasn't my favorite player, but there's an element of like just thinking about what do we need? Like the DBs. Hmm. Like Antonio Cromartie was pretty stout all the time in coverage. Like he was a strong defensive back and he had that 99 yard return for a touchdown on a missed field goal. Like I'm not in love with that answer. So <laughs> Adam, go ahead. Committed. I'm going to circle back around after. Uh, I will say, uh, I will say Darren Sproles. And strictly not so much for his running back, for his, his kickoff and punt returns. I thought he was so fast whenever he made those returns. And obviously special teams is a concern for us. And we don't know who's going to be making those kind of uh, returns. I think if we had him on the field in his prime making those kind of returns, I think he would just be just shoot off like a dart in those kind of situations. New I answer. Kevin has a new answer. I changed my mind. LT, what the f*** am I thinking? LT, sure. hands down. Hands down, okay. LT in his prime. Yeah, Hands LT down, his prime's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I think a, uh, I think okay. So for me, the areas of need are basically any defensive back, corner safety, or uh, edge rusher. So I'm gonna throw on our boy Sean Merriman. There you go. I think that I'm I think it would be, he was yeah he's a Charger chat legend now. So um, <laughs> I would I would love to see he even he even talked about it a little bit. He, I think that would be yeah. cool to see Sean in his prime, um, opposite Joey Bosa would be pretty, pretty pretty fun to watch. Pretty cool. It would be pretty yeah. energetic. Um, but good question, Shik Soto. Thank you for asking it. We move on to tweet me up, Scotty. Yeah. Okay. A.K.A. Scott Rydelsky, who asked the question. Kevin teased his answer in the last episode, but what's your number one Chargers player you're targeting for fantasy football this year? Fly me to the moon. And what would also be a number one Chargers sleeper player that will tear it up as well this year in fantasy? Let me sing among the stars. That's my best. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. I like the poll. That's so <laughs> random. I love yeah. it. Uh, I, all right. Number I, one fantasy pick. 
I don't know. Our our league is very heavy points wise for the quarterback. Oh yeah. So yeah. if if I I'm gonna have to go Justin Herbert just yeah. because. But I'm I'd also consider Eck because I think he's gonna be an absolute freaking monster this year. Oh, so yes. I would be okay with either one of those guys in the first round. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think that's who both all of us, uh, three it's, of us are targeting. That's why so somebody's going to be the odd man out. <laughs> that's honestly, somebody's not going to get, we're, we'll probably be in the top five picks and somebody's going to get screwed. <laughs> yeah. Whoever yeah. picks first is probably picking Justin Herbert. Whoever picks second is probably picking Austin Eckler. Yeah. And whoever picks after that is angry Patrick at the Mahomes other two. And yeah. All that other bullshit. <laughs> Yeah. No, but um, I think honestly, one of the guys in fantasy this year, and you know, I think could be really good is Mike Williams. Like he is always drafted really late. He's yeah. one of those guys that is drafted, but it's always really late rounds. So yep. I'd I'd look at I'd look at picking him up. I think he, yeah. he he's gonna have I think it's gonna be a touchdown heavy year for him. That's and for our league, we're not we don't do PPR. We're no, a no correct. PPR league. So it's it's not about how many targets you get, it's just yards and touchdowns. So yep. Um, he can do that. He, he, we've seen him do a thousand yards and eight plus touchdowns in a year. So, um, but I think, I do think Mike will, um, but I also think uh, Jared Cook could be a potential um, also touchdown dependent, but um, I think he's going to get thrown the ball a lot. I mean, right. we saw Justin really like to go to Hunter last year um, and Jared Cook's the guy right now. He's the, he's the real pass catcher of, of the group that we have. Um, so I think he could be a little uh, a, a little sleeper in the tight end group. Mm-hmm. I, I like that too because I heard there's an uh, interview talking about how important the tight end position is in this uh, New Orleans type offense hmm. and how utilized it is and why you know Cook was so good in it when he was there. So I think that I think that's a good one, Kyle. I think he's a late round guy. You could easily yeah, oh, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. sleeper yeah. pull that one up. Wait out, wait till the end, and <laughs> who knows? Maybe he'll be a top top five guy this year. Yeah, there you go, Scott. For your fantasy picks, obviously Justin Herbert, number one. That's the Just pick all chargers. I do. That's At, the one Adam does way. every year. That's, <laughs> that's why we never I get any of them. <laughs> <way. laughs> it's always all chargers. Um, all right. Let's move on now to Chris M., who asked the question. Antonio Cromati holds the Chargers single season interception record at 10 interceptions in 2007. Someone on the Chargers is going to beat that record this year, and you can take that to the bank. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I want you to guess. <laughs> who do you think will have the most interceptions this year, and what will that number be? K, love you, by. Uh, he knows. I love this. He knows who <laughs> he it knows. is. He knows. We got to guess. So there is a wrong answer here. Yeah. Uh, oh. I think... I think we don't really have like the guy you don't throw to, right? Michael Davis is good. He's good, mm-hmm. but he's not like a, oh, we're not going to throw at Michael Davis. Um, and he he proved to be a bit of a ball hawk last year. He had three picks. Right. There's no 10. Like, That's Mar- a yeah. lot of it's picks. Kind of, um, yeah, got a ways to but go. But if I had to pick a corner, um, I guess, does it say corner or just any defensive just back? Any no, defense. it's anybody. Yeah. yeah. I would still have to go with him getting the most – opportunity to do that. So I would say Michael Davis. I'm going to go Nasir Adderley. I think he's going to be in positions where, you know, what he did in college, he was an interception machine. So, and I think what, you know, what I've heard is that he's going to be not, you know, the free safety in our defense was very much just like last line of defense, stay back there, make sure everything, nothing gets behind you. It's going to be different in this, in this defense. So yeah, I, 10 interceptions is a lot. That's um, a lot. If it it's would be a, to, I guess, to answer your question, it would have to be eleven to beat that, and it would be Nasir Adderley, and that would be insane. That's but crazy. I, I like this fun game you're you're playing, and I hope you tell us some sometime soon who is actually going <laughs> to do this. Yeah, I I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who it could be. I would have to. I'll lean towards Michael Davis because I mean, part of me wants to say Asante Samuel Jr. because he's so fresh and new. Nobody's going to throw it to him. But like eleven interceptions in one season in his rookie season, no less. Well, how about how about this? How about we back up just a little bit? How who do you think will have the most interceptions on on our team? team? Let's let's pull the ten out of it because I think this is still a fun question. I mean, I I think the realistic thing would say Michael Davis, but I think. Asante Samuel Jr. is going to have that opportunity because like Kyle said, like there's not anybody that nobody doesn't throw the ball to. 
Derwin James could be that guy when he's out there on the field because he's Derwin James. The rest of the guys that we have, while we all agree are good, not necessarily guys that are not that have that title of like, I'm not going to throw the ball to you because you are that good. I think Derwin right. James is the only guy. You're missing you're missing a very important name here. And I think yeah. this is something you haven't thought about and you should consider. Bring it. Joey Bosa. He's dropping Stupid. into coverage this year, boys. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, if Joey Bosa 11 gets interceptions, 11 maybe. interceptions, Dope. I would lose my I'm mind. We're not worthy. Actually, Dude, that's that worthy. MVP season right there. If Joey Bosa gets half of that, yeah, if I he would gets lose five. my mind. If he gets one, I'm going to shit my pants. <laughs> he's in coverage against the pick. And he's just running. He's just looking for the quarterback to yeah, run him over. good luck tackling him. Yeah. Oh, um, I, he seems like the guy that if he got the ball, he wouldn't really know what to do with it. He's just like, I got to go hit somebody. So he'd like no, start taking off right like, at somebody no, and no, knock no. him out. It's like the water boy. When, when Adam Sandler gets the interception, he goes and finds the guy that made fun of his mom, <laughs> gives him the ball. He scores <laughs> and, and then he drop kicks him. him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what he would do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough to pick just one who we think it might be, but I think there's a lot of opportunities for guys to show up and and surprise a lot of people. Um, we've got a lot of good fresh talent, a lot of great names that really just haven't been utilized in ways that we've seen before. I mean, there's linebackers that could easily get those interceptions as well. That I mean, 11 is a lot, but... I do want to remind you, Nasir Adderley's first preseason game two years ago, he had two picks. She just dropped saying. like four. That could have been six interceptions, and that's one game. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I think this year's a good pick. I, I think we'll have to wait and see how it all shakes out. I don't out. think this year's a good pick. Okay, well, coach, strongly disagrees. Pick. All right, everybody, listen. You're all good picks. <laughs> everybody, uh, calm down. We're calm. Sorry, everybody, we're calm. just put your gun down. Yeah. Uh, thank you for asking the question, Chris M. We move on now to WPG Charger, who asked the question. All right, let me preface this. WPG Charger asked two questions, and he requested two voices, both of which I cannot do very well. <laughs> so just, you know, curb your expectations, folks. Here you go. Yeah, when, when are you guys going to host a Brandon Stairs, 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 Staley? And when that happens, not if, uh, what is the number one question uh, Coach Cal would, uh, would, uh, would, uh, would, uh, would ask Coach Staley? <laughs> All right, let's start with that question. That, and that was Porky the Pig. Yeah, yeah I think in case didn't, anyone didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, that's the poor man's Porky Pig. <laughs> um, yeah, my no, my first question would be: um, Do you have any job openings? <laughs> that would be the first. And what only are you looking question. for in an assistant? <laughs> yeah. What What's the first thing you look at on a application? How do you like your coffee? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Something That'd be my first lines, question. Yeah. If I might think you about were a, little a bit Subway more, but... sandwich, which <laughs> Subway sandwich yep, should that's you it. be? <laughs> <laughs> I would just flip the... I would start interviewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, I I don't know, man. I, that's that's a good question. I do think I would ask about um, how can I get a job in the Chargers organization? <laughs> to break the ice um, right off the bat with that. I love yeah, it. yeah. If you had, um, well, how about a coaching question? If you were wanted to pick his brain on on being the coach that he is, and you wanted to impart something on your own players, what would that be? I don't know, man. That's hard. <laughs> what would you guys ask him? Uh, are you hiring? And <laughs> exactly, yeah. Do yeah. you go, do you like guys that does terrible Porky Pig voices? Because I know a guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. A guy. It's hard. There's so much, like. I feel like obviously I would start getting into scheme and why he chooses what he does, but from a head coach, um, it's overall philosophy and like kind of how he implements those things. Mm -hmm. Obviously I've never coached the NFL. I would ask what are the differences in like, in like um, catering to certain guys. And if that's a real thing in the NFL, it'd be kind of cool to hear the behind the scenes of some of those things that goes into being a head coach, not, not necessarily just the X's and O's, but bigger picture, like, scheduling like how do you even figure out how you wanted to do those things and um i think it would be interesting to hear some of the, some of that behind the scenes yeah what are um, we doing if, if that flex time that 25 minutes like what are we doing on that <laughs> schedule with that one yeah. i want to know what that means yeah break that down for me coach yeah all right good good answer that's there hard question yeah good very good question yeah and let's go on to question number two which will be equally as bad here we go <laughs> If the Chargers make the Super Bowl this year, who would be the NFC team you'd prefer them to face? 
God, this is so bad. Myself, I think. <laughs> oh, man. Myself, I think it would be exquisite to see Big Bear versus Little Bear and avenge our first Super Bowl appearance. But beating on Anthony Lynn and his ankle biters is hard to beat. You, gotta, you went into like a pirate there. At the I end. know. I, I got <laughs> Sean really, Connery kind of is a pirate. Kind of, yeah, I got to work on my Sean Connery. Pirate. Pirate. That was good, though. You had moments. There were moments. I know. Of there's, just... there's glimmers, but it just nosedives <laughs> partway yes. through the question. Um, all right. So Super Bowl pre- preference player team. I like the idea of avenging that uh, avenging that 49ers loss. Mm-hmm. But it yeah, wouldn't be as good... sweet because it's just so different now. The, the, it's not the dynasty, that dynasty yeah. that we lost to. Like I, I would love to beat the shit out of Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I would love to get yeah. back there again and then Herbert to just outplay him. I would love I that. I also have I have a new kind of um dislike for the Vikings. Yeah, they're um, yeah. bitches. They're just, they're, their fans are just kind of douchebags. So it would yeah. be kind of fun to beat them. Yeah, And then always the Cowboys. It would always be fun to beat the Cowboys anytime. Sure. Especially in the prime time. Jerry Jones all excited and buys half the stadium. <laughs> and We just smack them around. That would be kind of cool too. That would be cool. I like, I mean, I like the idea of an all LA Super Bowl. You got LA in Chargers, LA, LA Rams, oh, good in call, LA. dog. We won LA. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be because I mean, versus his apprentice. Oh, exactly. That would be a storyline. That's Hollywood yeah, right there. That's, that's Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. That's you Hollywood. Can't, you can't write this stuff. That's no. right. Um, I, but I think, dude, just let, let's just get to the Super Bowl first and then, uh, then we'll Give talk. Give me anybody. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take anybody. Just get us there. Yeah. But, yeah. I think, I think you've got some good options there. WPG Charger. Thank you for asking the question. We move on now to another old favorite, Okie Doggy, who asked the question. Hi, I'm John Gruden, University of Dayton, current head coach in Las Vegas. When I'm not coaching, I'm usually up in the booth and scamming my way into 10-year contract for $100 million guarantee. I would have done this shit for free because I fucking love football like anyone else, but I don't mind the money either. I don't even know why they wanted me back after beating them in the Super Bowl by stealing their signs and the fact my predecessor, Jack Del Rio, had a 25-23 record with a playoff appearance in three years while I have a 1929 record with no playoff appearances whatsoever in three years. But enough about me. My question to you fellas here is concerning about a possible Super Bowl. Now, say you do win it all in that new beautiful stadium of yours, uh, yeah, wait, wait, which part of the team do you want to get the most recognition when you win it? The offense, so you can show that the years of having many great offensive players dating back to Air Coriel has finally won a Super Bowl. The defense, to show that when healthy, the defense can be an extreme nightmare for teams and to be able to say you were able to shut down the offense from the opposing team, whether it's the Buccaneers with Tom Brady, the Rams, just to show Sean McVay made a mistake trading Jared Goff away, etc. Or special teams, because that has been the biggest Achilles foot besides injuries, and to finally get rid of that monkey off your back. Now, if you excuse me, I'll be trying to convince Aaron Rodgers not to retire with Green Bay and try to get him on board with playing here in Vegas. Even if we are still bad with him, at least the donkeys can keep us company if they got Rodgers. Oh, just imagine the potential when I can finally run Spider 2 Wide Banana, or I can finally use my new play I've been creating called Scatterite Zebra Trojan X Squared Bunch Z Delta Solid Y Flex Tortellini <laughs> RIP Black Mamba Balls Deep in the Gap and Oompa Loompa Riding a Purple Walrus 47 Maple Syrup 33 Punctured Lung Echo A number two combo with a milkshake and an extra side of fries Throw a golden uppercut at his chin Kermit the Frog Special Minus the Ketchup Pond solo shot first, naked right Yankee, butt cheek on three, ready, break. <laughs> <sighs> Okie oh, doggy. Okie doggy. Oh, brother. I almost saw the light on that one like Craig. <laughs> you didn't take a breath. You just kept yeah. going. That was impressive. Good thing you're a pro. Woo. I am a pro, dadgummit. All right. <laughs> So if right. we win the Super Bowl, <laughs> I love that the question is like half a paragraph back. 
Uh, yeah. If we win the Super Bowl, who are we praising? <laughs> are we pra- I mean, who do we want to get the praise? I guess, yeah. Who do we want to yeah. get the praise? Herbert, 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 offense. Herbert. Offense. Kevin's all offense, all offense, offense, yeah. offense, offense. Yeah, offense, offense. That's surprising coming from you, Coach. That you would want. Oh, the I, no, no. I'm saying that's what Kevin said. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, okay. I thought you were agreeing with him. I thought he was too. Office. I was nice for a moment. That was, yeah. That was a different change of pace. And then you take it all away. <laughs> all right. So obviously, defense then for you, coach. No, I don't know. I. The question was awesome, and, and it was very funny. But in like <laughs> all honesty, I just don't care who who gets the credit. Right. I just want to win a Super Bowl and. Um, as, as long as the Spanos don't get the credit, I guess is, is my final answer. Sure. Yeah. I I think, uh, given the last Super Bowl, the, what we saw with the way that, uh, Tampa Bay's defense just shut down Kansas city because Tom Brady wasn't anything special. He made the, you know, made the touchdowns, which was, you got to have that. And Justin Herbert's fully capable of that. But I think with the defense to just shut down whatever team we go against and just make them look silly and make them run around the field and have to throw balls in midair. It's fun. That was pretty fun to watch. Yeah. That was uh, that was delicious. I'm just not used to that idea of that kind of a defense. So maybe I'll change my stance once we come out of the gates firing, and you know we give up like 14 points in the first three weeks. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think though if we were to win, Justin Herbert would get a buttload of credit for yeah. for getting us there, no doubt. Um, but hey, great question, Okie Doggy. Thank you for the for the script. I'll definitely add it to my reel. Uh, after this episode, <laughs> but let's move it on now to the final question of the night. Jr. A.K.A. J. Rudy, ninety six, certified fresh, certified fresh. Asking the question goes something like this: What is the worst thing you would realistically do to your own body to guarantee the Chargers a Super Bowl win within the next five years? Sorry, that was my my best bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. I gotta. So Another good. voice I need to work on. But, yeah, I uh, love that show. It's Bubbles is the best. He's the dude with the glasses, and he's like, yes, he's, guy. He's, he's like, oh, he's, like he's, he judges loves, joy out loves really cats. far, too. He loves his cats. Yeah. Um, all right. The, so, okay. So this is an interesting question. What is the worst thing you would realistically do to your own body to guarantee the Chargers a Super Bowl win within the next five years? Probably a pinky. That's the Lose worst? Actually... Yeah, that's cut off bad. A, I'm not saying it ain't bad. I'm just. Well, what are you? What are you clarifying. willing to do? Well, I'm let's just. Get, let's get into this. Hold on, that's not enough. Well, would you now, shave your beard thing. off? Oh shit, that would be pretty. F- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not necessarily talking about chopping off an appendage. Just why did we... my brain go there? I'm like, I'll give up whatever you want. <laughs> like, <laughs> take it. A take a pinky. Take take a. Finger. I'm done with kids. You can have my nuts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, enjoy the worst thing <laughs> you would realistically do to your own body to guarantee the Chargers. I mean, I, hmm, I'd I gain know. 200 pounds. I'd eat nothing but Dunkin' Donuts to guarantee the Chargers win a Super Bowl next year. And like big a bulldog, six, oh a Lord, here we come. And <laughs> 60 day fast, something Shit. crazy. Yeah. Worst thing you would do to your body. It's such an, it's I, such no, an I feel, it feels like a, I cut like a, like a, yeah, I feel like he's asking for like what would we chop off? Body parts. I think that's where this. I think is we're going into from. horror movie territory. I'm yeah. gonna say, I, actually, I take it back. I, I want to keep my hands intact. I'll get, get some toes. You can have some toes. Take some toes. Take some toes. <laughs> <laughs> Makes wearing sandals pretty hard, there, buddy. Um, it's all good. Yeah. Would you get a a ta- like a brand? A brand. You brand yourself. Oh, you brand away with the Super but Bowl what champ, of? like. The Super Bowl. No, no, no. Yeah. Not something good. Like brand a, big a old chief dick? arrowhead. Oh. <laughs> Balls Would in you a brand dick? a chief arrowhead oh. on your butt cheek <laughs> to win a Super no, Bowl? No, that's really rough. Maybe that. That'd be worth Would it. Would you? <laughs> that's <laughs> rough, maybe. <laughs> like, if, if you're really trying to, like, how awful would you be willing to do it? Like, maybe. A brand. I mean, you're guaranteeing a win in the brand next is five years. Permanent. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you guys right. are talking permanent damage. I mean, you could talk about like break a bone or something like that. Nah, and, that's weak. Well, yeah, but that's weak. not enough. I would do that happily to win a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Would you? I've never broken yeah. a bone. I don't know how it feels. Uh, it hurts a little bit and it gets numb. <laughs> yeah, it's just numb. 
I don't know. That's a good question. You can have you can have some opinions. I want to hear what you, you guys have to say. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. What are you, you willing go. to do? What are you to willing to do to your body <laughs> for five for a Super Bowl <laughs> in the next five years? I would do anything <laughs> for <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> but really I go. won't do that. <laughs> yeah, but Kevin won't do that. <laughs> um all right. Well, there you go. Great question, JR. And thank you for asking the question. Thank you, everybody, for asking the question. We always appreciate you folks uh, piping up in the Ask Bowl fam. It really makes us fun. I mean, we start crying so hard. I, that was a good <laughs> from one laughing. tonight. That was <laughs> and funny. Don't forget Friday, Braden Fajoko. Braden Fajoko, folks. Great interview. You guys are going to love it. Yes. The, the, the fan favorite from Hard Knocks doing the haka. I hope he. I hope he brings that back. I. I would love to see oh, that again. We ask him about it. Do you? And he okay, has good. an answer. Good. 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 I. Oh, I can't wait. All right, folks. That's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. K, okay, love you, bye. K, okay, love you, bye. <laughs> K, love you, bye. And now a word from our sponsors. Hey, everybody. Dick Vitale here. Let me ask you: Do you have kids? It's nothing personal, I'm just asking a question, baby! Anyways, who do you hire to watch your kids when you need a night out, baby? Some schmuck 14-year-old looking to make some extra money, baby? I wouldn't trust them any further than I could throw them, baby! You know who I do trust? Me! That's right, baby! When you need a babysitting service, call me! Dick Vitale, baby! I run a tight ship! So you have nothing to worry about, baby! And I can handle anything, baby! Tall kids, short kids, fat kids, dumb kids, all kinds of kids, baby! Have a fun night out, knowing that your kids are being taken care of by me, Dick Vitale, baby! Call today to enjoy tonight, baby! <laughs> <laughs>